Hello, welcome to my ghost walkthrough of the Scarlet Cascavel. This is a two-mission campaign that was originally released in 2018 as part of the Fifth Dark Project 20th Anniversary Contest, which it won. Personally though, while I thought it was pretty good and highly impressive, it didn't quite grab me as much as some of the other missions in that contest did. So I was really happy to learn that the authors, Tenor and Pukki Brunster, were working on a post-contest version of this mission, where they would address some of the issues it had, iron out some of the more rushed aspects of it, and even add some new content. And this version, version 2, is a masterpiece, I think. It's so good, in fact, I think it's probably in my top three fan missions of all time now, and that's the version we're going to be playing today. So a huge kudos to Tanner and Pukki for releasing this. It was definitely worth it. So let's begin with mission one, meeting at the Salty's Trumpet. It's about time I visited an old friend of mine. I received a letter from Wendelin, who used to run with Basso and me back in the old days. She's been lying low for the past few years, running a modest operation near the borders of Witchwood. She has reason to believe a famed artifact can be found there, and not just your average dusty relic. It's a long road through Witchwood, Superstition prevails that the woods are evil, filled with devils and spooks. You know, the usual. But I could use some quiet time in the country for a change, and the deep woods have plenty of shadows for me to feel at home in. Okay, we have two objectives so far. Meet Wendelin at Assault is Trumpet and find out what she knows about the artifact. Don't harm your contact. And optional, Legend has it that the trio of jade idols were lost in the forest. See if you can find them. Interesting that Thick One doesn't support optional objectives by default, but somehow they made it work. So let's make a real save and also raise the volume a bit. Go and let's take a look at the map. So we have the map of the forest, which is really beautiful, but it's not that necessary, the forest isn't too big and it's hard to get lost in it. So we start right here, and I'll show you what all these landmarks correspond to, but I'm not gonna rely on the map too much in this mission. We also have a letter from Wend. Garrett, the town guard here won't harass travelers unless they feel threatened, but there are some shady characters in the village. Armed men up from the city. Some may even know you, at least by reputation, if not on sight. I'll explain when you get here, but just be your usual stealthy self, Wend. Okay. Here we also have our first piece of loot, which I believe is a gem, some kind of emerald, or 15. forest is really beautifully done. It's not easy to make a forest in the dark engine, let me tell you. I also hope that it's not too dark for you to see. I already have my gamma at higher than default value, and if I raise it anymore it's just gonna look washed out. But this mission goes for an interesting aesthetic, where most of the textures it uses are darkened, and then it relies on lighting, usually col colored lighting, to create some interesting visual effects. If you played or know the Roxburgh series, it's kind of similar to that. But the bottom line is, it's definitely darker than the base game. So here we come to our first couple landmarks, the bridge here, and there's also a cabin this way, which correspond to this section of the map. Let's 
chores. Need more ointment from town, pick up wicks from slim wilder, replace lantern on village path, gather some moss. Why would he need that? Harlan, did you see that feller that passed by a few days ago dripping wet and smelling like moss? He claimed he fell in the river, but when he opened his pack I saw a pair of bright green gems. Just started to ask about them when the miller showed up and I had to go back to work. I bet you he found them gems right here in the forest. I heard rumors of ruined temples and such. Think I'll do a little scouting around, Marcus. Okay, so that explains a little. And we're gonna learn more about Marcus later in the mission. So here we have two mass arrows, which I'm gonna take, and there is one more hanging here. They will come in handy in just a minute. So here when you come to the bridge, what you wanna do is jump over to this side. There we go, there is one more mass arrow under the bridge. And then get into this tunnel. <laughs> There are two gems to pick up. Total 45. And we come to our first Jade Idol up there. One of the three we need to get for the optional objective. So this is kind of interesting. Because you can get it while it's up there. You need to do some tricky mantling. Like this. Like this. And then you have to jump, grab it and catch something on your way down, or else you're gonna lose health. And it's not the only way you can lose health, because this cloud of fairy flies, I think they're called, acts just like a normal bug cloud, in that it will hurt you when you get too close to it. And it's really easy to get stunned by these little fellers. So it's not really intended for you to do this, but it's possible. What's intended is that you use mass arrows on each of the four stones here. And that'll bring it down. There is another mass arrow here, by the way. So it's really good that you can get enough mass arrows just on your way here. You don't have to hunt for them or anything like that. There we go. First of three jade idols. Total 145. Next, we're gonna jump into the water. There is one more gem near this dead body here. And then I wanna get behind that waterfall. There is another gem right there. So total 175. Okay, this middle part, which corresponds to this section, has an interesting trap. Danger quicksand. So if you step onto this, you're gonna fall into some water and be pulled down until you run out of air, and then you're gonna start losing health. So it's a death trap, you cannot escape it. But you also don't die immediately, which is a little strange, but don't fall into it. That's basically what I'm gonna say. On the other side here is a silver nugget, total 225. And now we're gonna take the river all the way to the mill. With one stop along the way. So when you come to this tree, <laughs> and also hear that hum, get out. After weeks searching this filthy stinking woods, I'm nearly within reach of one of the famed jade idols. Too bad Elwyn was lost to quicksand, and that good-for-nothing pubert abandoned the expedition after a few little fairy fly bites, but now we don't have to split the money. The treasure is mine, at last, and the only way they'll get it is to pry it from my cold dead hands. So 
here we have the second Jade Idol. Total 325 loot. Now we have two of the three. We won't get our hands on the third one until much later in the mission. But we're gonna get it. So this is the mill then. And we cannot get into it right now. Mill closed until further notice. The way you get into the mill is you find a way around, so to speak. And we're also gonna do that much later in the mission. But just keep it in mind that you cannot get in here for now. And here we come to the sign point into the village, so we're basically through the forest already. So as Wen said, the city guards are neutral, so we don't have to worry about What's this up? guy. Durkin, stop shooting arrows at the squirrels. The town can't afford to keep buying arrows to replace the one you lose in the trees. And keep a sharp eye out. Let me know if more flesh is men enter the village. Don't try to stop them yourself. Remember what happened to Fergus. Also, call me Doogie one more time and you die. Duggle. <laughs> Chest with some loot. Kind stack, total 330. So, one final landmark this bridge is this bridge. The village is not accurately represented on the map, and that's where we're gonna spend most of the mission in. So, here you can continue further. There are some thieves here who are hostile to us. You can sneak by them really easily, but I just want to get to the tavern as early as possible. And the best way to do it is just to climb this. So let me make a real save. Not gonna explore the village too much. I'm only gonna rope up to that window. I also want to break line of sight with the guard patrol in there, because if he sees me shoot a rope arrow, he's gonna turn hostile. Nothing. And that's not good. So let me check. Are we still cool? Yeah, we cool. <laughs> still no sign of when's associate. If I can spot her mysterious friend coming into town, Lash will waive this month's security fee. I'm desperate, but if the stranger is who I think he is, I won't report it. The village has been under the thumb of Lash and his thugs for too long, and someone who can undermine his power would be most welcome. These two paragraphs kinda contradict each other. Anyway, this woman has a purse. Total 345. There are more things to get in the village, but... Let me talk to Wend first. So here is the tavern. Missing. Have you seen Marcus? He was last seen on the mill path in early first bloom. He's a swarthy fellow of short, uh, very short stature, wearing a greasy brown leather jerkin and black leggings with a rip in the left knee. Always wears a green felt hat with a wide brim and a cock's feather in a band, and carries a cheap green and gold horn. If you have seen him, or have any news of his whereabouts, contact Duggle of the Town Guard. Okay, this mission has three bonus objectives. They won't be counted in the stat screen, but the game will notify you when you complete them, and I will complete all three. And finding out what happened to Marcus is one of those three objectives, so we're gonna be on the lookout for him. Murder and Mayhem at the Parent Books the latest issue of Intrigue in Aldale has arrived. Another shocking tale of greed, deceit, scandal and chicanery awaits your reading pleasure. Get your copy while supplies last, only at the parent books. Relinquish your cares at the black hole. Are you weary from travel? Are you tired of your fine leather shoes being worn on country cobbles? Have you had enough of local color? 
The Black Will is an elegant country retreat equipped to meet the needs of the discerning traveler. Come relieve your weariness in the lap of luxury. Sojourn at the Black Will. So the Black Will is the hotel which we're gonna visit in the second mission. Finally, there is a silver coin in the toilet. Total 355, and let's talk to Wend now. You took your sweet time getting here, Taffer. Hey, Wend. <laughs> Running the town yet? It's good to see you, Garrett. I hear Basso's making quite a name for himself as a safe cracker out in the city. Too bad about Cuddy, though. Yeah, I should tell you about that later. Hey, listen, I don't think we should talk here. I have a room for you upstairs. Why don't you go drop off your gear and meet me in my office? It's downstairs in the basement. All right. Okay, get room key and we have a new objective. Put your stuff in your room, then meet Wendelin in her basement office. Okay, I also drank a bottle of wine she gave me. I don't know if that counts against the <coughs> no use of potions rule in the ghost and rule set, but I also don't really care that much, because this mission is not ghostable as per the rule set anyway. So, on this balcony we can get two more coins, total 375. Also, I want to point out, this clock sound really impressed me when I heard it. Because, as you may know, the rules of TDP 20th Anniversary Contest disallowed the use of any custom assets. And you probably already noticed that many textures, they are stock textures, but they have been modified, which was allowed. And this sound was actually made out of this. I think it's pretty damn cool. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> Here we can get into the attic. Galen, can we get rid of the stuff the late owner stored up here? At least block it off, it gives me the creeps. Glad I never knew the guy. Okay. <laughs> we have a really creepy cabinet with a drawer key. Let's open this, and it's just a pile of bones. Now, apart from the three bonus objectives. This mission also has six secrets, which, once again, are not counted in the stat screen, but the game will notify you when you find them. And this is the first of them. So what you want to do here is grab this holy water vial, bless the bones, and you get a dagger, and you found a secret. So you have 450 loot. And I will get all six secrets. Okay, this is our room. So, let's drop the sack of gear. Now we can head to the basement, but I want to finish looting first. So even though Wend is our associate, we're not disallowed from stealing everything we can from her guests, which is great. So we cannot open this door. To get into it, have to go around. Purse, 475. I can scarce believe it. It is beyond understanding that I, Cranston Schimmel, should be sent to such a remote posting when anyone with one eye and half a brain can see that I am above such a lowly station. I am destined to live in the city and serve at the highest level of the order. And as, and as if it was not enough to shuffle me off to the backwoods, I arrive to find that my lodgings are to be in a cramped, drafty bell tower. The noise when the bell rings could shatter one's bones. I could not stay another night in that place. <coughs> Nothing in this room. Can't 
stack for AD. Dear Janelle, I've arrived at a little village outside Witchwood Forest. The scenery has been breathtaking, but the trek through the forest was unsettling. Such an eerie and unnerving place. I was relieved to finally see the lights of the village through the gloom of the trees. I found a room at the local tavern and may remain here a few days before continuing my journey. I hope this letter finds you well, Flaine. Okay, that's everything when it comes to loot on the upper floor. So only one of these is readable. Staff, please take note of supplies needed for the week and check with the other town vendors to see if we can go in together. The miller has offered to pick them up as he's already making regular runs into Fog Hollow. You probably want to know about the item you came all this way for. You already know about the long-lost Ouroboros, since you already acquired one of them, the Serpentile Twerk. Yeah, I found it laying around in the old quarter. This is the one they call the Scarlet Cascabel, said to be the most valuable. But you've got competition. A gentleman thief who calls himself Nightingale was in here bragging about going after it. Nightingale, huh? That guy. Well, after plying him with some wine, he showed me a chunk of stone tablet that appears to be genuine. I contacted you because this job requires a master thief. Hmm, interesting. Up the canyon, there's a hotel called the Blackwell. It's becoming popular with nobles trying to escape city life. It was once the ancestral home of the Blackwell family, but stood vacant for generations until the current owner, also a Blackwell, restored it and turned it into a hotel. That's where the Cascabel is supposed to be. There's a footpath from town that leads to the hotel entrance. You might be a little out of place there, so maybe you shouldn't waltz right through the front door. I'll keep that in mind. My cut of this job is I need a favor from you. There's a local moneylender named Lash who is trying to muscle in on my business. I need some information on him that I can use to get him off my back. There must be something. No one moves to this town unless they have something to hide. If you can find something, bring it here to my office. Here. I managed to swipe this key to his cellar. You don't ask for much, do you? <laughs> All right. I'll see what kind of dirty little secrets our friend is keeping. Okay, so we've checked off our first objectives and now we have a host of new ones. Find some dirt on Lash and leave it in Wendelin's office. A map of the hotel would be useful, see if you can find one. You'll need some gear for your trip to the hotel, still 1500 loot. When your other objectives are complete, get some gear at the weapon shop in on your way out of town. Okay, let's make a real save now. So can I just say I found it strange how Garrett says, Ah, Nightingale, that guy. Because we as the players haven't been introduced to Nightingale, so even if Garrett supposedly knows who that is, it's still strange. Okay, so here we have some notes. Note, remember to ask the miller if there is another way into the mill. I need that copy of the hotel map. Okay, that's useful, now we know where to look for the map. Post notices for staff, swap in new barrel of witchwood ale, order more steaks from the butcher. There's also a ledger. Lash has brought more men into town. The village guard are brave enough, but they aren't prepared to handle these kinds of pros. Even my own men aren't enough, though Kivers does have that spider. Whoever heard of a pet spider? Still, extra security for me. I really must do something about Lash. He's not just trying to muscle in on me, he wants the whole town. I think it's time I brought in Garrett. He's my best chance of getting Lash off my back. I have just the thing to pick his interest. Nice of that fop to get drunk and brag about the artifact. 11th mid -tamper. Just got a shipment of spice. My supplier is staying at Blackwell as usual. I've already moved half the product. Maybe I should double my order before he leaves town. I expected Garrett by now. I sent the letter weeks ago, but I guess he'll show up in his own good time. I just hope it's soon enough. Okay, there is also... A lever here opens 
a secret passage. Here we can get old jumper switch and a note. Wend. I found this in some rubble and think it's an old power switch left behind by the miners. From what I've heard they rigged the power to explosive down there. Might come in handy if we ever want to access the south mines and think of the possibilities if those tunnels come up near the old mill road. Givers. So let me show you what that switch is used for. Is a barred door. Not barred, boarded up. Rory, have the explosives ready at dawn. Damn the company. We'll rig the bridge using the old generator and call it faulty wiring. I'm not losing one more worker to the south mines, no matter how many gems are down there. So, up here is the entrance to the old mines. And you see, it's all blocked off. There is no way to get past it. So what you're supposed to do here is activate the generator and then put the switch in here. Power. Flip it. And it'll blow up all that stuff. So it's not an actual explosion. It's just things teleporting out and then smoke gets teleported in because a real explosion would just alert the entire village that would make it really unfun for the rest of the mission but that's the only way you can get in there and the mines will eventually lead you into the mill and the mill is where is we can find the hotel map so it's necessary to do this so blowing up this barricade goes against the ghosting rule of no property damage and unless it's possible to kind of glitch your way through it or somehow get through one of those narrow windows into the mill which is clearly not intended by the mission authors then this mission is not ghostable as per the rule set but I don't mind so the mines are also my favorite part of this mission and it's it was an addition to version 2. They weren't there in the original release. But I'm not gonna go there just yet, I wanna get done with the village first. And it's a cool part, but it's not a big one, so I'll probably fit all that section in the last 10 minutes of the video. So this is Kiewers then, he's one of Wendelin's men, but he's also hostile to us. So be careful here because there is soft ground, but also a lot of gravel. There. To be seen now. Up there, see a vent that'll lead to one of the houses in the village. I'm gonna go there, my next step, but I wanna get one more piece of loot here. when I got level 505. Now, if you continue Who along here, there? the tunnel will eventually lead out into the basement of the miller's house. So the mill is abandoned, but the miller lives on the outskirts of the village, so that's his house. But I'm gonna get here another way. <laughs> we 
go. This is the only way to get into this house. I wanna close this. Here we have three silver goblets. Total 580. And the key to the and we're back where we were. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through the village, which is the bulk of the mission. And next I wanna get what's probably the most difficult piece of loot in the entire mission. So these are then Lash's men, and that house is actually where Lash lives, but I'm gonna go there last. Hey! Guess it was nothing. And the piece of loot I want is up in this window. But what makes it difficult is that it's kinda awkward to get into it. Shoot a rope arrow, something like this. I heard that. And it's hard to grab onto it. Guess it was nothing. It's also hard to place the rope arrow because the window frame is kinda narrow. Okay. First here. You saw it too? L605. One more thing to keep in mind here is that the stationary guard over there by the front door never gives any alerts. He will go into hunt mode if he sees you, but he never gives any remarks whatsoever. Okay, here is another coin. So it's 615. And this is the artist's quote-unquote studio. Goblet, total 6.30, and read this. I don't understand it. No one's buying my latest work. Gwendolyn from the Salty's Trumpet said it might be too abstract. What does that even mean? The proprietor at the hotel commissioned copies of family portraits. I don't know what he plans to do with the originals, though they must be worth a lot of money. They were painted by Burger, the amateur. It took me no time at all to copy the originals. I even added my own distinctive style at no extra charge. I have them on display in the gallery now, and I can't wait for the proprietor to see them. I know he's going to love them, he's always liked my work. He even called it avant-garde once, I don't know what that means, but it sounds sophisticated. Maybe if he likes these he'll become something of a patron. I might even become famous and live or have a studio in the city. Okay, up next we have some kind of pawn shop, I think, and this is a tricky place, because this guy doesn't leave this room, and it's hard to maneuver around him, so first of all, there is a rug up here. Secondly, two pieces of wood here, total 755, we cannot close huh? that. I 
finally on the second floor. and a second secret. Go. Silver coin stack, total 817. is the church. Now, this path will lead you to the where you have to end, end the mission. That's the way to the hotel, so I'm not gonna go there just yet. Alms box. Okay. The priest here sometimes gives a sermon. Looks like he's supposed to be giving it right now, but something about his voice line didn't work. Hmm. I thought I spied something. Well, I see nothing now. But this is actually openable. And you can rope up to the bell tower here. We have another holy water vial. Unnecessary, but also a gold hammer. Nay, our walls be cut from the thickest stones, our gates be wrought from full iron. Any who pits his strength against their strength shall smash himself with his own effort, even as the fruit falling from a tree dashes itself on a rock below. The builder's truth it is that men without belief do soften and fail as rotten wood. Tis true, and till then misfortunes are mirror for our blessings. Okay, now you've heard the sermon. I'm not sure what he does after the sermon each time. But I want to get into his bedroom. But there is a better way to do it. Just from here. Just gotta wait for him to go for another round of his sermon practicing. And we'll have enough time to loot everything from this room. This. Get a coin and a letter. Dear Brother Grimwald, your presence is required tomorrow to discuss a certain business arrangement of which you are in outstanding arrears. I will send my personal security guard as your escort to ensure you do not forget our appointment. Sincerely, S slash Esquire. Okay. It is so infuriating, I can scarce believe the gal of that woman. She hath made it no secret that she believeth me a re religious fanatic. Verily, she didst call me a close-minded zealot once, and hast had the temerity to imply that the builder was not the god of all men. What prompted her to open a fortune teller shop next to our little chapel? A new novice hath arrived. He be a strange lad who doth wear his pride like a mantle, and is ill-equipped to follow the path of the builder. In evidence thereof, he hath taken a room at the tavern, the den of thieves and wanton revelry. I am convinced the innkeeper purveyeth more than spirits. Okay, that's not a piece of loot. And I also have the crypt key. Which opens this. The crypt is also a new addition to version 2. There are no zombies or haunts or anything here. But there is the third secret. Final resting place of Brother Elgar, 
lay the first foundation of Alhambra Church. <laughs> Jeweled hammer. And there is one more hammer down here. Go. Little 1022. So the psychics shop, or the fortune teller, whatever you want to call it, would be my next goal, but you cannot get into it from the streets. The door is unpickable. And the way in is through the cellar here. There is also a piece of loot. <laughs> this window sill. Tablet. We have some spiders. Make another real save. The way to the psychic's shop is straight ahead, but I want to explore this path to the right here. Get some more stuff. Oh, come on. Sloped, loud surfaces are the bane of every thief. Okay. If you can't see anything, by the way, that's normal. I can barely see anything myself. So here we can grab a purse through this grate. That's kind of the intended way to do it. Little 1072. You can get it from here as well, if you sneak up to that spider and lean forward. It's a little more difficult to do, but it's possible. So, this vent doesn't really lead anywhere, we can't proceed here. But what we can do is find the fourth secret. And get in here. So this way we'll just get a little bit of loot. And this way leads us out where we could see from that vent here. To the apothecary or potion makers, I'm not sure, basement. So you can actually get into this place from the street. The front door is pickable. Passion potion, charm potion, and hair growth potion. And if you haven't found the secret in the spider basement, then this would count as a secret. So basically it's whichever one you find. We also have this. Essence of Oblivion. Administered experimental tincture, pitched from which wood placed with two or three glory mushrooms. After adding one drop of spider venom, the effect was quite alarming. My assistant forgot who he was and then flailed violently before succumbing to complete catatonia. He sat for two days and never removed it him make, not even to relieve himself. By day three he was afflicted with caustic flatulence that shook and rumbled the boards. I worry the neighbors will think it was me. 
this essence of oblivion is much dilution before I can find a lucrative use for it. Some spiders escaped through the venting, so I sent my assistant, mostly recovered, after them. It's been so lovely and quiet, I hope it takes him a while to come back. Or maybe he won't come back at all. And also this. He ems the honeymaker, he ems the jacksberry, sits we down on his trees and roots, sits with all his leaves and gifts, he feeders us. So the essence of oblivion has to do with the second bonus objective. And it's important to get it before we head into Lash's house. So that's everything this way. Now we can head into the psychic's shop. There is the key to the front door and the letter. My dearest Mabel, I am so infuriated, I can't believe the gall of that man. Brother Grimwald has made it no secret that he thinks I'm an unholy heathen. He actually called me a pagan once and implied that I worship the trickster. His latest tenacity that he thinks I'm a necromancer and want to raise the dead. I wouldn't pay any heed to such close-minded zealot, but lately he has taken to camping outside my door and keeping customers from entering. If I can't find some way to make him leave, I'll go out of business. Why did I ever open a shop next to a hammerite chapel? So now we can exit this way and we're once again where we were where we were. Up next is what I call a general store. It has the earth symbol and it sells picks, shovels and pans. So a general store, I think. Find glory and riches in the heart of witchhood. Don't leave your little uns crying for papa. Make them smile because you have quicksand insurance. Inquire within. Fairy fly ointment. Single dose 10 coppers, bargain bottle 30 coppers. Topical only, do not ingest. Well, we can ingest one right here. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, that's all it does. I'm not gonna do that. But also. We have a note. Dear Mr. D. As per our arrangement, I expect 50 gold weekly. You are now two days late. If you don't honor our arrangement by tomorrow, I will be forced to send those incriminating letters to your old partners in the city. I trust you will be more prompt in the future. A man of my stature is unaccustomed to waiting on someone of your station. SL Esquire. So again, Lash. And this has to do with the third bonus objective. Which I'll show you once I get into Lash's house. Stack of coins there. And another one in this cart. Eleven forty one. Now next we have the lantern shop, but again we cannot pick it, we have to find another way in. This is the potion makers then. We were in there. And here, very easy to miss, you can mantle this and get another piece of loot. 
1191. So, <laughs> to get into the lantern shop. Need to do this. Which by itself is not a secret, but it is kind of hard to find. So here her weekly sales expenses. That's an interesting symbol for Thief Universe. Note, get toilet paper. I can't believe I have to traipse to the tavern just to use the bathroom. Whoever thought a building this narrow was a good idea. I wonder if this is some kind of meta commentary on the way the mission is built. Okay, here. And get to, I think that's the general store's attic. Keegan, remember to stash our savings upstairs. We don't want you know who to take everything. I've had my eye on those fancy garments, boots, the tinker sells. With leather so soft and plush, you could see them, or you could use them to dab the tears of a wee babe. Just think what a tendy I'll be fashion around town in my new boots. Unless I steal all your cash. <laughs> find this is the fifth secret I think with a coin stack and the lucky coin now the lucky coin you actually use to access the last secret so it's kind of a secret within a secret and I'm gonna show you in a little while okay nothing else this is empty but we get a key I can get out. Okay. So thought I saw something. Here we have another one of Flash's men. But we can go around here. Now this way you can get into the butcher's <laughs> backyard with a burg, but it's not the best way, and it's easier to access it from the other side. So here we have the parent books. We read about this place earlier. Hey. <laughs> This can also be a little no, tricky, because that guy never leaves that upper platform. It can be hard to sneak around. Let's have some interesting literature here. Outwitted squirrels and other crafty woodland creatures. The undead primer. Eating people is wrong. The mushroom in religious art. Compendium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A fungus among us, the ubiquitous mushroom and its many uses. How to use burks to find edible mushrooms. Okay, and up here, mm -hmm. this, the Red Lady of Blackwell Hall, a history. Among the most notable of local legends is the Hunting of Blackwell Manor, now a hotel known simply as the Blackwell. Once the Blackwell family residence, the hotel is situated in picturesque mountainside set in near Witchwood Forest. But the tranquil scene belies the dark history of the manor and its inhabitants. Before its transformation, the manor remained unused since days when Alexander and Elizabeth Blackwell were lord and lady of the hall. During the years the manor stood vacant, many claimed to have seen the figure of a tall woman standing in a high tower window. She has become known as the Red Lady for the color of her dress and her dark auburn hair. Since opening at the hotel, reports of odd occurrences abound. Many guests have experienced a fear, feeling of foreboding or a sense of gloom or dread. Some have reported seeing ghostly apparitions, dark figures appearing out of nowhere and seen only out of the corner of the eye. Many also report hearing disembodied voices, the sound of footsteps and even occasionally the laughter of a small child. 
no one is certain what tragic, to tragic events have unfolded under the many tiered roofs of the manor, or who most of the ghostly inhabitants might be. But the Red Lady of Blackwell Hall figures prominently as one of the most colorful and unnerving of local legends. <laughs> Okay, there is one more readable on that table and a piece of loot you What's can see that? behind glass there. <laughs> I, I'm harmless. Leave me alone. There's a guy sworn. over here. Help me. There was another readable. Oh yeah. But it was the scroll. The latest issue of Intrigue in Old Dale is in. I'm surprised so much of this pulp fiction sells in our little village. I'll put up a notice at the tavern. That new book about the Blackwell Huntings arrived. It's a bit of local history and bound to be popular here. A fellow staying at a hotel was in here last week asking for all I had about the Red Lady. This should interest him. I'll send Jan Rampkin up to let him know it's arrived. What's that? What was that? <laughs> All right. I'm getting too jumpy. So this mm -hmm. is Witherington, Bledsoe and Cole. This is a small bank and this is where we're going to find dirt on Lash. But before we do that, we need to actually find the hey. freeze safety deposit box key. <coughs> So, that we're gonna find in Lesh's house. My eyes must be playing tricks on me. <laughs> You'd think I'd be used to rat noises by now. So, no need to go in there for now. Let's head into the butcher's house. Slash shop. Of coins total twelve eighty in the freezer is a gem total thirteen thirty. In the room to the right there is nothing, but I wanna read all these. Stumpy, how I shall miss you, my delicious friend. Nelly, such a sweet disposition, but so savory on sourdough. Elmer, ate like a dog, but tasted like chicken. Santa, provided an excellent... Yuletide treat. Old Dodger, a welcome addition to any meal. Okay, well, he's a butcher, makes sense. Hello? Hello? Nothing there now. Okay, in this closet, it's going stuck in the chest. Yes, it was nothing. Thirteen forty-two. That Taffin Miller, the old gypsy woman, said the magic beans would grow a beanstalk high as the clouds. Now I've no time to tend the garden, so I stuck him in a Miller's patch. He's always fussing over them plants of his. But before the stock could get higher than the Taffin scarecrow, he'd picked all the beans and cut her down. Then that goose. The old gypsy woman said it laid golden eggs. Imagine, I kept it goose for months, but nary a single golden egg did I see. It was the miller, I know it. He must have snuck in the coop and swapped the gold eggs for real ones. Don't know how he managed it, but he's a crafty one. The old gypsy woman said that if I buried a deer carcass in the forest each dark of the moon, the forest would soon be full of deer and I'd have no end of fresh meat. And then the best part is I get to keep the legs to sell. I guess he's not a very smart person. Okay, there is nothing else in here. So we can get out this way. So this is the Miller's house and be careful with the Miller's wife who comes out to the balcony because she can see you quite easily. And 
we were up there just five minutes ago. That's the bank. So this is the good way to get into the butcher's backyard. Just go here, grab that nugget, and you don't have to sneak past the burg. Little 1392. Let's head into the miller's house next. So there he stands near the door to the basement. But this is also the way to the basement, a much better one. And this might look familiar. It leads to the tunnel below the village. There's also a chest here. With a purse, total 1492. Sink, total 15, 17, and they will met our loot goal. <clears throat> I must get the mill open again. While it's closed, I have to make runs into Fog Hollow to supply the town with grain. The contents, constant trips are tiresome, though it does provide a good cover for making Wend's deliveries. I got the map of the hotel Wend asked for, but left it behind when we were forced to flee the mill. Damn it. That Rasmus is a fine butcher, but his behavior is nothing short of bizarre. I saw him bury something in, in my garden one night. Turned out to be a beanstalk with the best beets I've ever eaten. Too bad it got the blight and I had to cut it down. Then he bought a scraggly old goose that laid two eggs every day like clockwork. He didn't seem to care about them, so I snuck in every morning and took one for myself. I think he might have seen me because he started giving me suspicious looks and then he cooked the goose. <coughs> So you may have noticed that a lot of the readables in this mission are diaries. <clears throat> I'm not really fond of <coughs> diaries as a form of delivering exposition, but on the upside most of them are just humorous and not truly really related to the main story. So <clears throat> as long as diaries don't have the main villain confessing <laughs> their master plan or... <coughs> There are no hints like, I've hid all my gold in this specific location, I hope no thief ever finds it. Then it's all good. <coughs> so yeah, there was a ring there, total 1567. And we're done with this house. Alright, so, Lash's house is next. Well, almost. Too many damn rats around <sighs> here. <laughs> there is also that dairy. Which can be a little tricky, because this woman never moves. <sighs> and never gives any alerts, except when she actually third alerts to you. Here, 1572. Can get out. It's easier to do than it looks, but it can sometimes be a little annoying. What? Because she turns around randomly. Okay, let me actually make another real save here. There's flash a cellar door here. And Get in. Now, it's kind of hard to fall into this pile of coal without making noise. Yep. I don't want to do that. Because who knows who will, who might hear that. Okay, that's better. And in Lesh's house there is a ton of loot. Wine. Okay. That's everything in the basement. Now let's head out to the second floor. Uh, 
tablet here, total 1807. And here is the bottle, which you may notice Lash drinking from once in a while. And if you use the Essence of Oblivion on it... There we go, Lash Lobotomy bonus. So that's the first of the three bonus objectives. And he's basically knocked out now. There is also a fire poker. Lays here. Here we get Lesh's house key. So that's the side door. As Lesh Esquire, loans, securities, and reclamations. Huh? Gonna get out this way. But this is his office and the proper door to it. So this is the best way to get the purse of this guy. <coughs> 1957. There's also a bottle of wine here. This pair of glasses is also loot. Usually that's just junk item. Stack here, total 2057. And this opens a secret compartment with the safety deposit box key. So that's good, now we can head into the bank. That tavern wench is a thorn in my side. She doesn't scare easy, and what's worse, she has some muscle of her own. Seems she, she was pretty well connected in the city. I have to be careful about how I proceed. I don't want my past to catch up to me. They finally installed the Fishman safety deposit boxes I requested at Witherington, Bledsoe and Cole. I needed a safe place to store the ledger, and any half-decent boxman could crack the old ones in a tick. Looks like I'm on the right track. And on the upper shelf, you can find shop owners incriminating letters. So that's the general store owners' letters. So now we can head back in there and do something with them. <coughs> so I'm gonna head into the bank next. This door, but there's also a back door, which is unlocked. Okay, good timing with the clerk, because this safe can be kind of difficult to get to. Side of the purse. Hey, who was that? Timing is really tight on this one. Only one client in the safety deposit room at a time. They expect privacy, not to mention the security concerns. Okay. This room is safe. So first of all, here is the deposit box we need. Get Lesh's ledger. Cannot read it. And only two of the other deposit boxes are interactable. Both are pickable and have loot. There we go, 2184.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thought I saw something. Ugh! I hate rats! general store. If we drop shop owners incriminated letters here, we get the neighborly neighbor bonus. So that's the second of the three bonus objectives. Finally we can head into Wen's office and drop off Lesh's ledger. still need map of the hotel, so now we're gonna head into the mines. Don't see anything now. Like I said, are my favorite part of the mission. It's actually my favorite haunted mine in any fan mission period. It's really cool. So here we have minor ghosts. We have lanterns on their helmets. I think it's a nice touch. Um, can you not do that, please? Because you're gonna alert everyone. <laughs> I'm not actually sure why he's alerted. Did maybe I make any noise when I jump over here? Because <gasps> he's supposed to be just patrolling around, he's not supposed to be alerted. Okay, and I know what his deal is. To me. Okay, that's annoying. I've never had this happen. I'm also not sure why he attacks that wooden pillar. I can get by him real quick. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, that works, I guess. The problem is that there is a piece of loot here, right in his view. not supposed to be happening, so you'll probably have an easier time sneaking by him when you play this mission on your own. Okay, I have to be faster. Remember how I said this was my favorite part of the mission? Okay, gotta wait for him to... ...look somewhere else, maybe? is not ghostable anyway, so even if you saw me right there... I don't want to spend any more time on this. So that's where we have to go next. But before that there is one piece of loot here, in this graveyard. Go. 22, 14. Okay. Well, this guy is at least not alerted. So I don't want to get seen by him. <laughs> yeah, that motion, they are supposed to be doing that. It's kind of like they are mining even in death, but they are not supposed to be standing in one place or making any noise with that motion, so I'm not sure what's happening there, but whatever. Okay, last piece of loot in the mines. Here. Meter 29. Made a noise on the gravel, but I don't think he heard me. And here... We move into an old pagan temple.
the gym. And in the water is a silver nugget. 2294. Okay, you can also stand on these. Not very realistic, but very useful. Okay, in this pool is another gem. 2344. And over here, you can find poor V Marcus. Okay, so that has to do with the third bonus objective, like I said, and we have to deliver him to the captain of the village guard. And we also get a rune disc, which will help us get the third jade idol. Now, in this place we also have these guys. These are actually enemies, they're some kind of spirits and I'm not very fond of them I don't like enemies like fire elementals or anything similar to that because it's very hard to read them know which way they are looking or gauge their reactions okay so use the rune disc on this the statue will rise and we can get the third jade idol here Twenty-two, twenty-four, forty-four. Okay, that completes our optional objective. Okay, I think the spirit is far enough not to hear my splashing into the water, so that's good. There are two more gems, and there you can see a grate, which is obviously fallen from up there. And that's our way into the mill. Okay, I'm gonna climb the pipes. Mill log. It's a good thing I have the side business helping Wend move goods since I have to abandon the mill. At least for now. It's been overrun with some kind of entity. Just a few sightings at first, but these spirits began to encroach more and more. I have no idea what they are, but no one is willing to go back to work under these conditions. Come to think of it, this all started after Marcus disappeared. He's the only one there enough to help me clear the things out, but he's been missing for months now. Did he finally strike Trich and move back to the city? Damn it, where is that blasted dwarf? Here he is. Okay. In the last compartment here is a coin stick. Some flash bombs here. <gasps> On top is a purse. And then when we pick this, we're gonna find the map. There we go, hotel map. Now we've completed all objectives. On the first floor are two more coins. Total 25, 34. And now this door is bashed open and there is one more spirit patrolling the mill grounds. So I don't want to stick around here and mess with him. Okay, so now I can show you the last secret in the mission. For this you have to use the lucky coin we found in the lantern shop and drop it into the well.
Here is the rain. Level 2584. And you found all six secrets. Nice. Next I'm gonna complete the final bonus objective. So the captain lives up here. Captain Dougal, village guard. And all you have to do is drop Marcus on his table here. But Dougal is actually hostile to you, so be careful with that. Sir? Who is that there you? They're in dwarf discovery bonus. Don't see anything now. And you Nothing completed all now. three bonus quests. Nice. And these two coins bring the total to 2604. Which is the max loot for the mission. So we end the mission here in the equipment shop. Right, so total time 58 minutes 13 seconds, found 2604 loot, which is all of it, picked from pocket, 20 lux, which is way more than you need to do, but it helped me cut down on time. So let me make a real save here. And I'll see you guys in the second mission. Thanks for watching and take care.